¡Es mi mujer! ¡No, por favor! Every hour, an animal is beaten or abused. For just a dollar a day, help rescue abandoned dogs from Mexico. Provide medical care, food, shelter, and love. Call or join us online to make a difference. Hi guys, it's Marcela here. My memories from living in Mexico always inspire me to bring something new to you guys each week. Today we're whipping up something great for a new party, get together, or even business meeting to make your potential clients feel welcome. We will be making authentic guacamole, salsa, and chips. And what a better way to munch on these tasty appetizers than with a freshly brewed glass of agua de horchata, a refreshing beverage that is happily enjoyed in Mexico. Today I will be making the salsa and guac with two special guests. First, Chad White will assist me in making the salsa, then Bethany Franco will assist me in making the guacamole, and then they will both be back to enjoy some yummy horchata. Please help me welcome my first guest, Chad White, chef and owner of two restaurants in Tijuana and La Jolla, California. Thank you for being here, Chad. Well, it's great to be here, Marcella. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Well, like you said, I run two restaurants and it's been really great. The locations work for me personally because of the recent patterns in businesses moving their production to Mexico. Wow, that's quite interesting. Well, thank you for being here to help me make the salsa. I actually learned how to make this from my grandmother's famous recipe. And for this, we'll be needing a couple of dried arbol chiles, a can of Del Monte stewed tomatoes, onion, tomato, jalapeno, cilantro, lemon, and of course salt and pepper. So the first step is to chop up the peppers and put them in the blender. As you can see, I've already done it. So I'm gonna place them in here. And this step is actually crucial to making the salsa taste authentic, almost as crucial as it is for Mexico to have import partners. Did you know that Mexico's top five trading partners are the US, Canada, China, Brazil, and Colombia? Yeah, I even heard that the US was the largest, bringing in over $300 billion in 2015. Yeah, 81.2% of total Mexican exports. Mexico has signed 12 free trade agreements with 44 different countries, one of those free trade agreements being NAFTA. 84% of Mexico's total exports in 2015 were delivered to the U.S. and Canada, 5.4 in Europe, 4.3 in Asia, and just 0.2 by Africa. Interesting, right? Now we're going to toss in the jalapeno I just sliced into the blender and the tomato juice. The tomato juice is a major part of this recipe, just how it is for Mexico to have export goods. Some of their major ones are automobiles, electronic equipment, machines, engines, and pumps. That's Oh wow, that's an interesting fact. Yeah, right? Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this onion I already chopped up while you finish chopping up that cilantro. All right, all done here. Great, thank you. So we'll add this into the blender as well. And we'll get some lemon juice. And then just, thank you, just a little bit of salt and pepper. And finally, we'll blend until we have the consistency desired. Look, the salsa's ready. Mmm, that smells amazing. Let's hope it's not too hot. Don't worry, I blended it just enough to make it mild and not hot. I told you that stuff was crucial. Go ahead, give it a try. Mmm, that is so good. <laughs> Mm, speaking of crucial, it is really important that their 2018 elections is presented fairly so that we can see a decline in corruption in their governments. Who would have thought Mexico's political environment is so different from ours, right? When we come back, I'll share my family secret guacamole recipe with a special guest. It is the 11th most populated country in the world. It is where popcorn was first domesticated. There are over 100 indigenous languages, but Spanish is the main one. It is the most interesting country in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer beer imported from Mexico. Stay thirsty, my friends. 
Now please help me welcome my second guest, owner and creator of Skinny Girl, Bethany Frankel. Hi Bethany, thank you for being here today. The pleasure is mine, Marcella. I've always been a fan of your show, so it's great to be a guest here today. What's great about our guacamole is that you can change the recipe to make it extra savory or even spicy for the daring type. First we're going to get our ingredients. We're going to need four avocados, lime, cilantro, onion, and just a little bit of salt and pepper. So we take the avocados and we cut them into pieces. So as you can see, we first take the avocados and cut them into pieces. And then we'll just put them into our mixing bowl so we can mash them together. Then we're gonna take the limes and cut them in half and then just squeeze the perfect amount into the avocados. This will give it a wonderful taste combined with our chips. Bethany, why don't you go ahead and start mashing this while I get the other vegetables prepped out and cut. It's funny how easy it is, yet people still choose store-bought over homemade guacamole. I bet anyone who's short on time would really find this useful. Now I hear that the food and beverage industry is a really strong industry in Mexico. But I'm curious as to what else Mexico is known for. Here we go. Thank you, that looks great. My husband actually always talks about how big the petroleum and tourism industries are in Mexico. He always says how if he could find a way into either one, he would be set because they're among the largest industries in Mexico. Next is to dice some of our white onion and add it. I've already cut some here, as you can see. So we're gonna add some of this into our guacamole. Let's be careful not to let the pieces be too big because we don't want anybody to bite into a big chunk of onion. We just want enough to flavor our guacamole but not to overwhelm it. The cilantro we're adding here is really just to brighten up the guacamole. So we'll just add a little bit of it onto our bowl. And finally, we'll just add a little bit of salt and pepper to wrap up the dish and we can finally move, move on to our horchata. Mm. Are you ready to make the horchata? Let's do this. For this, we'll be needing one cup of old-fashioned rolled oats, a cinnamon stick, four cups of water, which I've already poured in here, and sugar as needed. I use brown sugar because it's a healthier alternative. Awesome, it's great to have both of you guys here to help me make the horchata. I had so much fun cooking with each of you and I learned so much from both of you and where you come from. Now, to start with this, we'll start by pouring the oats into the water. Here you go. Thank you. So the next step is to add the cinnamon stick into the horchata. So we will add it into the tiny little pieces I've already done here as you can see. And adding it into little pieces is really important because we want to make sure not to drink any of the big ones. Almost as important as it is for Mexico to have a stable economy. That's so true, but unfortunately their falling oil prices and difficult global economic environment have lowered expectations for Mexico's economy. Oh yeah, I read online that the peso fell by 13% in 2014. That's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. So finally, our last step is to add the sugar. And remember, this step is as needed. I personally only add two tablespoons of sugar into the horchata. Great. Now that all the ingredients are in here, we will mix it. and just let it sit for about 30 minutes. And after that, we will blend it and we can finally enjoy it chilled or over ice. And I actually have some that I blended earlier and I poured for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Mmm, that's delicious. That's so good. Good, right? Well, Bethany, Chad, thank you so much for coming today. I had so much fun with both of you. 
and thank you for watching Mexican Made Easy. My name is Marcela Valladolid and I'll see you next time.